<laughs> oh yeah. Press the John 41. We on a war path. The price is going up. Let go. Dragons on the wall. Yeah, man, I can't sleep, man. I can't sleep, man. I just finished the Shibata show, man. And we done talked about some stuff, man. If you ain't tuning in, if you ain't clicking those links, man, get that. Make sure you got the app. Make sure you tune in for the Shibata show, Turf Thurs, man. You, don't, you never know what comes out of it, man. I can't sleep, man. I think we are on some type of, like, you know... Horace Butler investigation <laughs> discovery type of action right here, man. Cause we done talked about the Jordan River with Horace Butler, man. You know, peace to the peace to the bro. You know, peace to him, man. We we done talked about the Arnon River, but I'm gonna take it a little. Um, I'm gonna ether it up a little bit. Impress the John Forty One, baby. We talking R9. And something's kind of coming up. When we search for the San Banyan River. That's leading us to the kingdom of the Anian. In the land of Peru. Now I'm excited. So I'm going to make this swift. I ain't slept yet. It's 546 in the morning. I've been researching for the last five hours. I did a. Four hour radio show. And we've been reconning all day digging on it. I got four babies, man. I ain't got time to do a lot. But man, I couldn't stop digging on this Anion, man. Because it has a lot to do with this Arnon, man. We're just talking the Arna, the Arna. And this is the craziest thing, one of the craziest, um, you know, investigations that I've ever really <laughs> even, you know, sought after, man, because as soon as you start digging on it, it's almost like the matrix starts to glitch out. You got all these links, right? Because I, I, I've been digging, man. So right here, you see... Holy Bible contains Old New Testament. Right. From the river Arnon until Mount Hern Hermon, Anion was the boundary of all the southern coasts of the land occupied by the Israelites beyond Jordan. So we're talking about Numbers 21. We're talking about Deuteronomy 3. I'm digging in this script because I'm like, whoa, because what we're about to get about this Anion. Well, we about to dig on, fam. Might blow it wide open. I'm, I'm just going to say right now. This is one of the most important documentary videos that we've ever done here. You know what I'm saying? At 432 to drop. And it comes at the perfect time. And Preston John, number 41, we're going to get to 50. Because if this is what it appears... To be um, revealing itself to be. Then yeah man it goes right into you know. This Arnon biblical situation happening right here in America man. And when you really put the whole story together. And then you put the more story together with the with the Moabites. Having this uh, Arnon river that separated them from the Ammonites. You put the giants back in. We just talked about King Og of Bashan. You know, we know we got the Amorite giants as well. You know what I'm saying? Sahan and all that. So, <clears throat> but yeah, when you start digging on this, in the search in Google, it'll, it'll say, all right, the Anion was the boundary of all the southern coasts. No problem. No problem. I'm just going from all these links. Here it says, my land from the Anion River to the Jabbok River. All right, cool, Anion. Uh-huh. 
but they never once crossed the Arnon River into Moab. Keep going. In Numbers, it is simply Anion. Anion, River Anion. Anion River, River Anion. In Numbers, it is simply Arnon. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so you see this Anion and Arnon sort of switch a route. So I say, can I find any of these translations that are still using this Anion instead of Arnon? Because we're about to get on this Anion, man. We're about to blow it wide open, man. Halal Hawa, Shabbat Shalawah, man. Home team, stand up. Press the John 41. From the river Arnon. So just click on it. Alright, so it tells you here from the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon. Anion was the boundary. Boundary coast. Alright, so we click on it. Now, do we find anything about Anion? From the river Arnon into the Mount Hermon, all the plains of the east, Sahan, king of the Amorites, dwelt in Heshbon. Alright, so that might be connected to that giant, same situation. Bank of the river Arnon, from the river, middle of the river, alright, unto the river Jabot. From the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, Arnon was the boundary of all the southern coasts. Now, what does it say here? From the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, Anion was the border. And then it's changed. It's almost like the Matrix is switching all this shit up in real time, man. Because how could it say Anion right here in the search? And then you click on it. And instead of Anion, it says... From the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, Arnon was the boundary of all the southern coast. So this is supposed to be Anion, but they switched it up. I mean, even if you just take out the Arnon in the search, I know it's small, but you're going to be still, it's still going to give you Arnon, even though I'm just searching Anion. So Anion is going to come up Arnon so it's pretty conclusive that Arnon is Anion and why is that important I mean keep going New Living Translation my land from the Anion River to the Jabok River all the way down to Jordan but they never once crossed the Arnon River into Moab why is Moab important we just talking the Moabites right the more the more let go man let go you click on this from the Arnon River to the Jabok River. It doesn't say Anion, they switched it to Arnon. So they're not going to give you. <laughs> it's like they're doing this in real time in the Matrix, man. I'm, I'm just trying to say, I've never seen this before where it says this many, you know what I'm saying, subsequent consecutive times. Anion, 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 and every time we click on this, you're not going to find it. From my lands, my lands from the Anion River to the Jabok River. From the Anion Arnon River to the Jabok, so they switch it there. Every text, I mean, there, it's like a computer algorithm, and they've switched it all in real time, man. And it's like they just fucking did it, man. Cyclopedia, Biblical, the Theological, Ecclesiastical, Literature. In Numbers, it simply says Anion, but in Deuteronomy and Joshua, generally, to be TBC, River Arnon. So they're telling you right now, straight up, that in Numbers, it's just called Anion. So if they switch this to Arnon, it would just read, in Numbers, it is simply called Arnon, but in Deuteronomy and Joshua, it's called the River Arnon. It wouldn't make no sense. Instead, it says in Numbers, it is simply Anion, A-N-I-O-N, in Numbers, but then you click on it, we'll 
looking up the R9 here. Here we go. Right here it says in numbers it is simply and then they switched it R9. Can you see it? In numbers it is simply R9. So now it's not gonna make no sense. Watch this. In numbers it is simply R9, but in Deuteronomy and, and Joshua, generally the river R9. So why even make that point that in numbers it's called R9, but in Jude and Deuteronomy it's also called R9. It don't make no damn sense. So they, they're clearly switching this shit in real time. Like some algorithm, man. In numbers, it is simply Ani. But in Deuteronomy and Joshua, it's Arna. Now we're making sense. Why are they doing this? Maybe we're about to find out. Because in all these links, you're going to click where it says Anion. Anion. And then you're going to click the link and it's going to say Arna. Trust me, man. I've been doing this for hours. Trust me. <laughs> go do it. Go have fun, man. So we're just talking about the Annie Eye, man. Let's go. And this is kind of where it led, man. Remember, we were talking about the Sabbath River, you know, get the drop. We're going to get back in the Salmon Yah, all right? Because it's all, it's all leading the flow, all right? So we got this Salmon Yah River. During six weekdays, all right, during six weekdays, the sand stormed inside the glass, and on the Sabbath, it rested. This is somebody who literally got a glass container full of earth from the Samanyan River. This is right, written in the Sefer Yefi Toor by Mordecai Yafe, the Levite, or Levish, all right. And it's showing proof that the Samanyan River flows six days and rests on the Sabbath. It's the Sabbath or Shabos River. Now, where is it? We're all looking for it. But we're also looking for, you know, this Anion situation. And they're going to compare the Anion with the Bering Strait. <laughs> all right. And we're going to just put it all together. So during the six weekdays, even though he took the sand from the river and the sand still flowed man six days and then rested on the sabbath i too would like to testify concerning this something my father related a number of times in the city of lisbon in portugal there was an ethiopian who had a glass container full of this sand every sabbath or shabos when it was close to shabos he went to the street called rio nova or Rekov Hakadash in Hebrew. For there lived Morenos who had been forced to accept Christianity. <laughs> Who's that? The Ethiopian would call out to them, show them the glass container in his hand, and say, Close the shops, for the time has come to accept Shabos. And he would show them the Sabbath river sand from the Samanyan River. I also heard of this matter from a reliable person that the prominent R. Meyer, the doctor, saw the Ethiopian with the glass container of sand we mentioned standing in front of the Muslim house of prayer in the town of Shalefa. A judge passed and asked about it, took the container, and quarreled with the Ethiopian and censored him, saying, You have acted inappropriately, for this supports the Sabbath day of the Jews. So the Muslim didn't like that because they changed their their Sabbath. Just like the, uh, you know what I'm saying, Pope and all that changed the Sabbath to a Saturday. They were, they're changing it from this day to that day. Why? And that goes back to our Sabbath conversation. If it's so wrong to keep Sabbath on sundown, Friday night, then why are they all changing it? Why is the Christians getting away from it? What power does it have? I mean, they're, they're worshiping the sun. They're worshiping the sun on the Sunday, on the first day of the week, like the Babylonians. Why, if it's if it's just sun worship, why not worship uh, the Sabbath on on Saturday? Why do they get away from that? You know, that's another interesting fact. So, where is it? Where 
is it? Where's the Sandman Yah? <clears throat> so later in the Sefer, Rabbi Manasseh ben Israel, remember that work, Manasseh ben Israel and his world, you can get it in the drop library. Password is 1234 to get through the door. Manasseh ben Israel asks, How the ten tribes remain so elusive? Many people ask that if it is true that the ten tribes exist in the world, my naga, why do we know nothing clear about them? This is no difficulty, for we see that even concerning things known to us, we do not know where they come from. Man, they can't tell us who we are. How can they tell us who we're not? They don't know where you come from. Such as the source of the four rivers, the Nile or Nahal, the watering resting place, is the etymology, the watering place of rest, the watery place of rest, Nahal. What does that place of rest have to do with the San Benyan Sabbath River? Rest and rest, huh? In addition, there are many, listen up, in addition, there are many, many hidden countries in the lands of Kadar. Now we broke down this Kadar in the scripture and it just refers to this land that's being replenished in the scripture and in part of America. Wait a minute. Now you're bringing it on home because we're just looking for the San Banyan. And we're connecting it with the tribes. And now we're connecting it with the hidden countries in the lands of Kadar and in part of America. With that... You know, as far as we know, Kadar is Cedar, as long as, as far as we know. <laughs> cedar and Kadar, Cedar City, Utah, all that. And in part of America. So now you're comparing or connecting this San Benyan, these tribes, with America. And we got a map that's going to blow it wide open. A map I've never seen before. A simple map. In the 1500s, in America, right where Utah is, it says Prester John. Oh, you don't believe me? We're just surfing the wave. And we're going to talk about the origin of this map. I blew it up as big as I could. You know how they make these super small. I know it's hard to read some of this. But this is Asia. <laughs> All right. With that's the that's the other world and this is the other world. This is South America connected to North America. Right here you see India Superior, just like we have maps of India Superior. Right over America, Cathay, right there, Katai, Cathay. You have Mexico right here, so you know we're not playing. And right here you have Prester John. And I got it as big as possible. But you can, you know, you, you click the links below and you can dig on it yourself. So this is, you know, this this will be California over here. This is Mexico. And this says Prester John right here in the four corners, man. Right here in the four corners. And it appears this says Kalelus right here. But I'm not sure how, you know, we're just trying to put it together. This is Cuba over here. And right here you got Preston John. We're going to get it, man. We're going to get it. So we're connecting the tribes. We're connecting the rivers with America and all the places in the north of the world, such as Florida. Uh-oh, found of Utah. So you got La Florida here. This is another old map. Right here you got India Superior. India Superior, Cateo or Cathay, India. You have La China right here. China, Florida, India Superior. Or what some would call Grand Tartary. Because even though they have their Tartaria over here, over here they called it the Grand Tartary. 
or the India superior. I mean, this is the real Asia, my people. When you compare this to the map that we just saw with India superior right here, northern, North Cali, uh, North America, <laughs> North California. And right here, you got it again, India superior, Mexico. And right here it says Prester John. So we, we right here, my people in America, they just found the descendants of Prester John. <clears throat> Sorry, man, I've been screaming live on the radio. You know, I'm just, I'm just hanging on. Very interesting map. We're going to talk more about it. Because we're just talking Florida, India, Cathay. Oh, man. Let's go. So again, man, you got these hidden countries in the lands, part of America, right here, hidden countries, and all the places in the north of the world, such as Florida. Who's calling Florida the north? I mean, who's calling Florida the north, man? Unless they're just approaching from the south. Let's go. But then it says, part of America, hidden countries, right? All the places in the north of the world, such as Florida, the kingdom of Anion. Whether you spell it A-N-I-O-N or A-N-I-A-N, same thing, Anion, all right? In the land of Peru. Uh-oh. So we can have a, you know, a plethora of theories at this point. We can connect the Anion with what we're about to connect it with, you know, throughout uh, North America, California, the Bering Strait, way up there, you know what I'm saying? You can connect it directly with Peru. You got La Peru, El Peru. But either way, you're connecting Anion or the Strait of Anion with the kingdom of Antioch. We done been digging, man. We've been digging on this in the script and numbers in Deuteronomy and you got the Antioch River. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the kingdom of Peru. You know, with what little we can kinda dig on this, you know what I'm saying, that's available when you dig on these Peruvian kingdoms and the Antioch, all right? We're going to talk about the mythical Straits of Ania by Godfrey Sykes out of the Desert Laboratory in Tucson, Arizona from the Bulletin of American Geographical Society in 1915. But yeah, man, I mean, this really kind of kicked off the search, really just talking about this live in the ether, man. You know what I mean? The kingdom of the Ania in the Peru in the land of Peru and other western countries that are larger than all the parts of the world revealed to us. Now this is a, a known traveler man, Manasseh ben Israel. I mean he's been doing his thing so he's coming from, you know what I mean, he's coming from over here. He's coming from over here. Now he's saying what he's finding here is larger than anything he's seen over here. The kingdom of the Anion in the land of Peru and the other western countries that are larger than all the parts of the world revealed to us. Besides, it may be that even in the countries known to us, some of the hidden tribes live beyond the high mountains. Oh boy, we just talking Anion, let's go. Pull up the link. Let me drink my tea. It's about to be good. We just surfing the way.
Now we got when the great Venetian traveler Marco Polo returned to his eastern wanderings in, in 1295, he brought back for us, for the use of ge geographers and future travelers, a fund of information concerning Eastern Asia, which was to serve as the main source of such knowledge for the next 500 years. So based on his drop, they started making maps, all right? It was thus inevitable that as the wave of Spanish exploration swept across the newly discovered American continent more than two centuries later, men should instinctively turn to his pages for information concerning that mystic land of Cathay. Cathay, Cateo. We talked about it also in the Atlantic Journal. Volume 104, we'll get that again. Like it's the first time. So they're looking for the mystic land of Cathay. Remember, Columbus was looking for the Grand Khan connected to this Cathay situation. It's all the same thing. They're all looking for Preston John, man. They're all looking for the Khan side, which it was now considered had been so nearly reached by these new travelers. Because they're coming over here looking for this promised land, all right? As Cortez and his followers pushed forward, however, into the vast regions which lay to the north and west of their first line of entry into the continent and found little save semi-naked savages. Uh-oh. You call us savages, but you're speaking Hebrew to us? What savages do you speak Hebrew to? I mean, savages is like the ca the cave dwellers that's grunting. Like over there, right? Like over here, they was in the caves grunting. They had no language. They had to learn how to do all this. Those are savages. You don't come over here with a Hebrew interpreter and call us savages. We're Oriental Splendor. Remember, you're in the Orient. They call Preston John the Oriental too, just like they call you. And civilization were looked for. The first picture gradually faded away and it was at length realized that more exploration must take place upon and around Balboa's new ocean before the coveted land of Kublai Khan. Hmm. What does Kublai Khan got to do with America? Shit, what does Genghis Khan got to do with America? What does Preston John got to do with America? What does Batu Khan got to do with America? What does Manku Khan got to do with the Inca? Where Kublai Khan and his descendants could be attained. So they knew that these certain Khans were over here. Whether they was descendants of Preston John or Genghis Khan. But before the passing of this dream. The belief that the Chinese emperor, Empire had had been near nearly reached. Had sufficed to fill the maps of the new continent with kingdoms. The new continent. Alright. Because China over there is not on a new continent. But over here you have La China, right where Mexico is. And over here, right where Mexico is, you have Prester John. And India Superior. So literally they're putting Prester John in China. <laughs> That's where it's at, man. That's where it's popping at. Again. La China, India Superior, La China. Here's where Mexico is, right? Look where Mexico is. Look where China is. Look where Mexico is and where China would be. You see Preston John right in La China. Let's go. So let's get the couple more paragraphs of this when it says uh, so we're looking for these cons over here and they were placed upon the blank spaces or fitted by eager cartographers to suit natural features described by returning voyagers an instance of this perhaps pardonable professional enterprise is to be found in the Rouches map published in Rome 1507 
and used to illustrate an edition of Ptolemy's works. The relationship between the new Spanish discoveries and the Terra Nova in the Asian continent was not yet fathomed, but all of Marco Polo's kingdoms were placed close at hand in the northwest ready to be absorbed by forthcoming expeditions developing the idea of a little further after this discovery of the mainland north of Isthmus we find that the maker of the MS map illustrated in outline has placed Prester John and his idolatrous neighbors not very far from Mexico. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. Yeah, man. It's Preston John 41, man. We turning up. Let go, man. It's a brand new year. It's harvest season. It's the Sabbath. We talking the Sabbath river. Come on, man. Turn up, man. PJ, let go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and we just, you know, I, I'm just digging on Ania, man, and you could imagine the energy going through my, my gut bone <laughs> when I'm reading this live, so Ahab to Drop Nation, Ahab to the Ether Squad, man, because all of you contribute to the wave, man, and the wave sometimes brings us right here, and this is a smaller map. Of this joint right here. Alright, so I just made it as big as possible. Press the John, what? The maker of the MS map, the unknown maker, they don't know who made it. But it's in the British Museum. <laughs> Cause they got all your shit. And they got a map in the British Museum. Can you imagine? They got the full size joint. <coughs> That got Preston John right here in North America, man. The maker of the map, MS Map, has placed Preston John, Preston John, <laughs> and his idolatrous neighbors. So you know, King David was surrounded by by a gang of hijacks. Let's go. We talking Atlantis. Let's go. Not very far from Mexico. Now we know we're talking about a black or a copper tone swarthy king. I mean, yeah, when we did go on press the John. <laughs> I don't even have to really, you know, I don't have to put black. I just put Preston John images. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? I don't have to put black. So we know we're looking for these Afro people right here in America. Priest King, the black priest king is rocking right here. And we don't want to talk about it. We don't care about it. We put our timeline back together. You got the Israelites literally rocking being called Mongols and Tartars and, and, and you know what I mean, uh, Celtics and, you know what I'm saying, all this stuff, man, you know, and in reality, you're just talking about a worldwide kingdom of Israel where Preston John had rulership over all three Indias, and that's why the Tartary Empire was so big. Because not only did Preston John have a big chunk, but then Genghis Khan came and sort of carved through the whole thing. And that's what they're getting. It's not just one empire. It was warring empires. Let's go. 
We just talking Preston John. So Preston John is placed not very far from Mexico. The name of the maker of the map is not known, but it bears evidence of having been drawn in 1530 or thereabouts. And the original is preserved in the manuscripts department of the British Museum, bound in the med in the medical recipes of a certain John Bowling. And I've seen this name pop up before, but why would this map be hidden in medical recipes, man? I mean, they are hiding the truth, right? You can't put Preston John right here in America. They want to put Preston John in Africa, right? Ethiopia over there, right? The map is crudely drawn and the lettering is hard to decipher with certainty. And so, but few names have been transcribed, transcribed in the outline copy here given, but it will be observed that the port of Zaytan, one of Marco Polo's well-known ports, has been placed upon the west coast of Mexico. So one of Marco Polo's main ports is being put right around his Mexico, man. And that's his main port that he's selling from? Well, that just cracks open a whole nother pie. A whole nother reality, just like Anion. Let's go back there, man, because now that we know, man, with amazing proof that Preston John is indeed right here. We've been digging on it, but now, <laughs> I mean, now, done deal. Let's go. It's in the British Museum. Done deal. Let's go. So who are these people? Who are these so-called Negroes? Did they just come from Africa? Did they just come from Africa? When they already got a Negro priest king. I'm asking you, my Naga. Did you just come from Africa when you got a Negro priest king right here rocking in the kingdom? I don't think you heard me, man. Let's try it this way. You know the book, The Races of Men, right? You know the book by Robert Knox, right? Races of Men, Love to Aqua Type Battle. Who dropped this on us, man? Page 167, we're just talking about the dark races, man. The dark races, man. Let's go. Let's get it from here, man. We gonna flow. Their labors prove that any, that everything there that lived was specifically different from living beings on any other land, my naga. That even the apes differed specifically from the apes of the old world or the new world over there by having an additional tooth. <laughs> so. If these apes are different, of course these swarthy Negroes are different. But they're telling you, they're telling all you that you all come from right here. And that all black people must be the same species of black people. We can't be tribal. But the apes got different numbers of teeth. You got different black dogs, right? You got the terriers and cocker spaniels. You got... Doberman pictures, you got different black dogs, but the black humans, man, they, they all must come from Africa. I mean, even racist Tommy would tell me that. How is racist Tommy's scholarship different than my Nubian brother who's telling us we're all from here? How do y'all got the same scholarship, you and racist Tommy? Y'all can't say the same thing, man. How does racist Tommy know? How do you know? How do you know we're not already here? Who is the priest king? Who is Mansa Musa? Who is Montezuma? Who is Takum Sa? Who is Hawata? Oh, we're just surfing away. This is Preston John 41. We're just surfing away. Let go.
This ain't no play play. Nah. Nah, this ain't no play play. All right, so now that we can establish that there is a map in the British Museum that has Preston John right where the Four Corners would be, right near Mexico, now that we have established that Marco Polo's well-known ports that he's selling from is placed right there upon the west coast of Mexico. Oh, boy, let's talk Anya. Now we're going to bring it on close to the California Peninsula. Let's see. Let's pick it up over here. Let's pick it up over here. There is, however, little doubt that the name Anion, which soon became common for the new strait, or what they called the Bering Strait, connecting what Asia and America, was originally borrowed from Polo, and that the region in which it is intended to locate this nebulous passage was that described in chapter 5, book 3 of his travels. The author is speaking of the Gulf of Kianan, or Tonkin, which he says extends to a distance of two months navigation along the northern shore, where it bounds the southern part of the province of Manji, and from these to where it approaches the countries of Anaya, Tolman, and many others already mentioned. After some description of the gulf, the account concludes, This gulf is so extensive, and the inhabitants so numerous, that it appears like another world. The chapter concludes here, and the author leaves the subject, but it is easy to understand how the geographers of 250 years later searching the text of the good Messer Marco for verification of new discoveries in and rumors about this borderland between east and west might be attracted by so alluring an opening and so ignore the inference plain enough to modernize that a description fitted a region much further to the south. So we are actually just looking for, you know, looking into the theory of where this Anion is. Is it, is it, uh, you know, further into this Bering Strait situation that that'll be supposed to be connected to Asia way up this way? Or are we connecting it over here in Peru? First, you need to know it's over here. Alright. You see how there's a land bridge that connects La Florida with would be Greenland? You see how South America connects to what would be Antarctica? Oh boy, I mean you really got to see how migrations and how, and how this flow is taking place over here in the Americas, man. But, this, but be this as it may, it is certain having once appeared, the name Ania or Annie N was destined to haunt the maps of the Northern Pacific. Persist upon the backside of America for over 200 years, the conception of a dividing strait was, a, was for a while extremely vague, and the more conservative geographers were content merely to carry the coastlines both of Asia and New World so far as their definite information extended, leaving the closing of the gap to the future. This conservatism is exhibited, for instance, in the beautifully executed Partolono of circa 1540, of which a facsimile, a fac, a facsimile, facsimile is in the library of the American Geographical Society and also in the map of John Rotts. In 1542, the idea of a close approach but definite separation of the continents was nevertheless slowly gaining credence. And so we find that Tra Mazzini in 1554, let's get over here, some other good maps for you to check out. In 1558, Drew. Both drew definite but apparently still hypothetical coastlines bordering the Great Opening. 
In Homan's map, too, there is to be found what was perhaps the nucleus of the idea of a double strait between the Pacific and the Northern Oceans with the great intervening island or body of land for he carries the great gulf above the sea of Lukozo, Lukozu to an indefinite but apparently widening opening towards the north. Parts of Homan's beautiful maps were much copied oftentimes off, almost in facsimile, facsimile but other cartographers during the next century or so. It is in the 1561 map of Gostal Gostaldes that the name Ania first definitely occurs, being applied to a province in the extreme northern part of the map. Windsor, Bancroft, and other historians have traced the earliest use of the name Ania to Zaltari's map of 1566. So we're just talking about this Strait of Ania. Once placed on the maps, the Strait of Ania became a well known feature and for a while served only in their original capacity as dividing Asia from the New World. Dividing Asia from the New World. So it's dividing one world from another world. Hmm. I mean, we can take this concept and just just, just hold on to it, all right? Because we're just digging on it. Now, Mercator differed from most of his contemporaries in placing the kingdom of Anion upon the American side of the strait. This doubtless being the interpretation of Polo's text in which the countries of Anion, etc. are only approached. So, Anion is placed on the American side, on the American side. Alright, alright, alright. Because when you dig on Marco Polo, and remember we got it from here with this cafe and Zipangu. A week before he lands at Guadalajara, Columbus opinions that the Penzan suggestion to steer southwest is not made with respect to Kapangu or Japan. Let's go. Two days after the discovery, he feels he must go on to try and find Kapangu. And when he reaches Cuba, he believes it to be from the signs the Indians make to be this very land again. So right around here, they would put Zipangu. I know we had another map that actually had Kapangu on it. But yeah. Cuba, Cuba. Here we got Cuba over here. Alright, so they're thinking that this is basically Japan. So if this is China, just put it together, this might be what they're calling Kapangu or Zipangu or Japan. Let's go, man. I mean, you gotta just understand and overstand. That they pretty much photocopied the old world and put it over here, right? And called this the old world. That's all they did was photocopy the real spill and act like they're living in your world. And walk in your shoes and take your titles, man. It's witchcraft. But these are the map makers, right? And when he reaches Cuba, he believes it for the signs the Indians make to be this very land. At the same time, he's equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. So he's in Cuba. Let's say, you know, we're in Cuba here, right? And he's trying to get to the China. And he's saying that it takes 10 days to get from Cuba to China. And on a boat, especially then... It might take 10 days to get from here to here. But to get from Cuba to China in this other world is more than 10 days away. We know that. We don't have to be expert navigators to get that drop.
At the same time, he is equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. He is determined to deliver the letters of the Catholic kings to the Grand Khan. He's looking for Prester John. He's looking for Priest King Prester John. He's looking for Cathay. He's looking for the Grand Khan. Remember, he's looking for Cathay, Cathay, Cathay. By the way, that's where Catholic comes from. Cathay, Catholic, Catholic, Cathay. Let's go. The Catholic kings to the Grand Khan. Now it's a hopeless and anachronism. Now with the said Grand Khan, he gathers from the natives a Cuban monarch was now at war. So this priest king that they're finding is already at war. Let's go. We know about the war. We talked about the Genghis Khan, Preston John situation. We talked about the Moral More situation. So the Cuban monarch was now at war. The Khan's great ships, he understood, came to Cuba. The Khan's ships came to Cuba. Remember, Cuba used to be called Hawa Hawa. But they spelled it J-U-A, J-U-A. Hawa, Hawa. Let's go. And that's where the Khan is. That's where the priest king. That's where the Israelite king is. At least one of them. Now they're saying the Khan's great ships came to Cuba 10 days journey from the Chinese mainland. 10 days journey from Cuba to the Chinese mainland, right up in Mexico. And right up in Mexico, you go right to Preston John's Kingdom, the mainland, the Chinese Cathay, Chinese mainland. Right here in Cathay, in India Superior, right? India Superior, right? Japan, China. Cuba, Japan. Trying to get to the mainland and the China. What does he say? Ten days journey from the Chinese mainland. The cotton of the West Indies would sure be a good market in these cities. His majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. Okay, he's very close to Prester John. Are we seeing the picture? Are we seeing clearly? His Majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. It is certain, he writes, while still off the Cuban coast, that I am in front of Zato and Ginse of Amoy Harbor in Hong Kau, and again in Cariba and Canaba, which was described to him as the mainland behind Española, in our language, the north coast of South America. Columbus believes he has at last located the name and kingdom of the Khan. Where? We're talking South America. We're talking Cathay. Amen. Yeah, we're just talking Preston John. <laughs> I mean, we're just talking Priest King Preston John. That's all we do. Talking us, Pres talking us some Preston John. Let's go. All right, all right. So that's out the Atlantic Monthly, Volume 104. You can pull up this link in the Canadian Encyclopedia if you want to get some more on the connection between the Strait of Anian and the Bering Strait. Part of the legendary Northwest Passage linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the old and the new world, they're saying, right? The name probably originated from Ania. A Chinese province, where is China? Mentioned in the 1559 edition of Marco Polo's book, it first appeared on a map issued by Italian cartographer Giacomo Gastaldi about 1562. We got some of that. Strait of Anian, separating Asia from America. The strait grew in European imagination. Everything to them was this foundational uh, fantasy, this mythology. The, the strait grew in European imagination as an easy sea lane linking the Euro 
Lincoln, Europe with the residents of the Great Khan in Cathay. So they knew they could reach the Great Khan in Cathay by hitting up this strait. They can come down this barren strait to get to Preston John's Kingdom, man. And how does this connect to Peru? How does this connect to the... We're talking the hidden countries in America, such as Florida, <laughs> the kingdom of Anian, and the land of Peru. How does it connect to Peru? Let's keep going. So get that drop, get that drop. We're just talking about the Great Khan. And that this mystical situation that we're calling the what? The mythical strait of Anion. So it's a myth. It's all a myth. It's an imagination. Prester John's a myth. When you put all these myths together, you might reach reality zone. You know what I'm saying? You might reach reality when you put all these myths together. We're just talking America, man. We're just talking Cathay. We're just talking the Great Khan, the Grand Khan, Priest King, Preston John. Now here's where it just, uh, here's where the marbles start to roll. Another great source that I, you know, just uh, dug up, man, in the last few hours or so. Going crazy, digging, man, digging. The Lost, the Ten Lost Tribes of World History by... Zevi Ben Dor Benite. Alright, let's go. We'll get it from right here. Pull up the link. However, Garcia's main question was who had populated the Americas? My not. <laughs> and how? He was convinced. In other words, how did Preston John get there? Well, damn, you got to go all the way back to Mu to figure this out. But they're going to connect it to Atlantis. Let's go. He was convinced that the earliest ancestors of the American Indians were, in fact, Hebrews. Now, remember, we just talked about the races of men. So let's finish this and then go back to the other one. Because we got a bunch of sources up, all connecting Preston John to America all connected this Anion situation and then you can go back into the theory of connecting it with this Arnon situation and I forgot which um, river or situation Horace Butler connected Arnon with but I know it's connecting with Jordan and I know it's connected with the Yarden and I know it's all very important with this whole Moabite Israelite you know what I'm saying territorial beef man and this is again out the races of men by Robert Knox. Their labors prove that everything there that lived was specifically different from living beings on any other land, including you, Copper Color Naga. You are different than any other living beings on any other land. That even the apes differ specifically from the apes of the old world by having an additional tooth and by being without the central spot or hole in the retina of the eye found in man and in the apes of the old world that the new world was an erroneous phrase seeing that it was a very old world in every sense of the word I ain't even, I've been yelling for hours I don't want to keep yelling on you. I'm just saying, come on, man. It's right here. And we in the races of men. How long have we been digging on the races of men? And watch what comes out of it. Left the aqua tide battle. Found in man and the apes in the old world that the new world was an erroneous phrase, man. Stop calling it a new world when you know it's the oldest world and they're telling you this. This researcher Robert Knox is telling you this in Races of Men. 
We're talking about the dark races of men right now. The dark races of men. So it's erroneous to call this a new world, seeing that it was a very old world in every sense of the word, that the copper color race of America stop. Stop, man. Let's get it again. American in the 1828 Webster Dictionary. A Native of America. Originally applied to the Aboriginals or the Originals right, or Copper Color Races. So you Copper Color Naga, body bag, that's who we're talking about. Because you were just, you were just found here by the European. And then they took your title. Okay. Let's go. Are we in the races of men? Let's get it. We got so many great sources up. It's a beautiful thing. It's erroneous to call this the new world when it's very old, man. Very old world in every sense of the word. That the copper color races in America, we just got it. That race which extended throughout the length and breadth of the land. Negro, you extend throughout the length and breadth of the land. You are the American. You are the descendant of Priest King, Preston John King David. It's happening right now, right in your face. You are Israel. But you copper colored Nagas were neither metamorphosed Welshmen. <laughs> nor Connaught men, nor Norwegians, nor even Polynesians. The last hypothesis, I believe, offered the credulous for the people, peopling of America. The credulous, we're gonna go crazy. Always accepting that standby of the thoroughbred theorist, namely, listen up, he went through all this to tell you the drop, namely, that the copper Indians, that is, the true Americans, were the lost tribes of Israel who fled there on rafts headed, I suppose, by Prester John. I mean, what? We need some more war drums up in this month, man. We need to keep the party going for Prester John 41. Jakan. Wow. We'll let go. We'll let go. I mean, pretty soon it's going to be on and cracking. Just like this. Let go. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a brand new year, right? Is you dancing? Are you feasting? We'll let go. Okay, you know, I get a little excited because we're putting all this together and we're going to bring it on home with this Anion and just and just surf the wave with it. So if we're putting together what these researchers are all putting together, that this is the old world, that this is the land of Preston John, and what? I suppose that you are the copper Indian, the true America, the, the, the tribes of Israel, following Prester John. All right, let's go back. The 10 lost tribes of world history. Let's go. Now that we got that taken care of, now that we know when we talk priest king, he's the king of the Indians. He's the king of the copper colored Nagas, the king of the Indians. 
Got the drop on the fountain of youth. This is King David, man. <laughs> this is King David, man. In Cathay, Mexico, the Four Corners, Cali. We just talking America. So let's get this quickly. He was convinced that the earliest ancestors of the American Indians were in fact Hebrews. Wait a minute. We just read in the races of men that you copper color Indians, you niggas, you nagas, you nagoosh. The peopling of the Americas is connected to the copper Indians, the true Americans, the lost tribes of Israel, following priest King Prester John. Nice and easy, right? Nice and easy, right? 1500s, 1500s, let's go. But then we get it over here in another source, the 10 Lost Tribes of World History. And uh, Zeve Ben Dor Benite says what? Garcia was convinced that the earliest ancestors of the American Indians were in fact Hebrews. So multiple researchers in multiple timelines is connecting you copper colored Nagas, you Negroes with the real Hebrews, with the real Israelites. And now you're seeing the proof on the maps who and where your priest king is rocking at and that you are in India Superior right now. But let's tie it all to Atlantis. Let's go. To be sure, Garcia mentioned other ancient peoples who also came to Americas, such as the Egyptians, Phoenicians, who he said had first populated Atlantis and then the Americas, each by their own right could be considered the original Americans. Yet, Garcia insisted that Hebrews had arrived there first. <laughs> so all this wing-wham you're getting from all these people when you tell them who you are, that you are the original. That you are the American. And they give you all this shit about it. Oh, well, you're not... You know, copper doesn't mean that. You know, it means a little lighter tannish. Nah, I got a grandma. I got grandma's pennies. You know, I got a whole jar full of grandma's pennies. And I know what copper looks like. When you put it on the hand of a Negro. That was just found here by the Europeans. So even when you factor in the Egyptians, which we know are coming from Atlantis, Poseidon and the, and the whole crew, right? But they're not original here. This is Preston John's land. They're not original here. Atlantis is hijacking and trying to, you know what I'm saying, dominate and control all of these mythical magical kingdoms that's already dominated by the priest king Preston John and with the help of Genghis Khan and all them they try to do it again but this Atlantis is a hijack the original land belongs to the people belongs to the true people not the Atlanteans not the Egyptians we're talking the original. We're talking the original. So what do we got? We got Garcia going to bat for you. Letting them know that whether we're talking Egyptians or Phoenicians. Each by their own right could have. Could be considered the original Americans yet. 
Garcia had to keep it trill and insist the Hebrews had arrived here first. We're talking a connection with Moo. Garcia, it seems, was more interested in establishing the Ten Tribes theory than in proving the validity of the Atlantis theory itself, and therefore was careful to always or also cite the theory that the tribes actually migrated to the Americas through North Asia. So he had to, you know, kind of do a syncretinized theory and put a little bit of their hijack in it as signs would one day actually prove to be possible well that's not a fact this is the old world man they didn't need to migrate here they didn't need to migrate here now check it the Asian theory was not only much stronger in that it involved no need to revive Atlantis so they can skip over that but it was closer to older and more familiar speculations about the North Asian location of Azareth and the possible Arctic track to America. Here Garcia employed another tedious method of finding Hebrewisms in Native American rites and languages, a systematic presentation of an array of clues and evidence drawn primarily from biblical sources, but also from classical texts and contemporary studies, most notably those of Juan de Torque Mada, among other things, he claims that the root Mexi, just like we digging on, came from the Hebrew word Messiah, the word Meshi, which is actually Hebrew. So when we talk Meshikans, we're talking about the Mashiach or the Meshi or Moses, Meshi, Moshe. And the Mexican language indicates the commander, the head, the captain. Asking how could those tribes go to the Western Indies crossing such an immensely immensity of water and an infinity of land. Garcia's answer sticks to the concrete. From Grand Tartary, they could go via land unto Mongolia and from there pass through the Straits of Ania, which are very close which are very narrow, and go to the kingdom of Ania, the kingdom of Ania. So here we have a mention of the kingdom of Ania. Just like we were just talking here about the kingdom of Ania in, in the land of Peru. Except here we're talking about Ania. You know, very close, right? These are two theories, but they're coming together. Here we're talking about Ania or the kingdom of Ania that is already the terra firme or the land of New Spain. Well, what's New Spain, my people? Mexico. New Spain, right? I mean, it depends. Sometimes they call Mexico New Spain. Sometimes they call Hispaniola, you know. Talking about uh, Haiti and, and these different areas, which would be more closer to Peru if you want to look at a kingdom in Peru. Or you're just talking New Spain, Mexico. With the Mexi, right? Right next to Presta John. The kingdom of Ania. What does it got to do with priest king Presta John? Everything. Everything. Because he didn't call it the kingdom of Ania. Let's go. We in the mind of a hijack. Trying to get the drive. So from Grand Tartary they can go via land into Mongolia. And from there past the Straits of Ania. Which were very narrow. And go to the kingdom of Ania. That is already terra firma. Of New Spain. The Straits of Ania. Separating Asia and America appear on Ortelis's map at a sea above, as a sea above the China Sea, just north of Japan. Hmm. So we got a, a strait, or we got a sea. They are apparently named after a locale named Anaya, just south of Azareth. So you already know we got Azareth right here, <laughs> right over the four corners, same spot. The kingdom of Anion or Anion Regnum 
appeared first in 1559 map of Asia made by Giacomo or Jacopo Gastaldi we just talked about this Italian cartographer whose map was the basis upon the which Ortelius created his map of Tar Tartary decided that the local Aniu mentioned by Marco Polo was a kingdom north of China north of China right so if they got China right here then north of China you're running right into this kingdom of Anion north of this China right here on this map all you gotta do is dig man let's dig faster On their way from Azareth to the kingdom of Anion, the ten tribes, he asserts, picked up some customs and rites observed in that kingdom and province, careful to provide a complete picture of the possible paths to America. Garcia also discusses the Greenland roots, the Greenland roots, which we see right here. There's a route into Greenland. Let's go. <laughs> we just surfing the way. So we got the Greenland routes, providing a review of several suggestions put forth by other scholars among from Greenland, among them Greenland, who maintains, or excuse me, Guinea Bear, Guinea, get Jenny Breyer or something like that, who maintains that Azareth is in Grand Tartary, Grand Tartary, and if they're calling this India Superior, then are they also calling this Grand Tartary? In reality, when you got the priest king Preston John already here, and we know when we talk Tartars, you're pretty much talking Genghis Khan's people, and then when you talk the Katai and Kara Katai, you're talking Preston John's people, all labeled Mongols. Let's go. Grand Tartary, that is said, as it is said in Edris. It is across the river Euphrates. We know we got that document showing Euphrates River in America. We got that. The ten tribes went to the deserts of Tartary and from there to the land towards the island of Greenland because in that part it is said that America is not surrounded by sea and in other parts it is enclosed by the sea and almost an island. Man, you dig on it, man. You dig on it. So Greenland is another interesting dig, man, when you start digging on Greenland. Here it says, This mode of argumentation peaked in 1681 with Diego Andreas Rocha, a physician from Lima who had served in different capacities in Spanish America. Rocha's lengthy tratado, unico, all that, all right? is indeed unique and singular covering all peoples from Santa Fe in the north through Mexico and Peru to Chile. Rocha, an ardent Spanish patriot, as his 19th century editor dubbed him, makes the argument that the Americans' ancestors were descendants of ancient inhabitants of Spain in the first place and of the Israelites and Tartars in the second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> He's saying a lot, Rocha, Roca. So now you're saying that these indigenous people are descendants of ancient Spaniards, all right? <laughs> or the ancient, you know what I'm saying, Nagas of Spain, you could say, but mainly that they're Israelites and descendants of Tartars and Israelites. Tartars and Israelites letting you know that you got some of Genghis Khan's people, the Tartars, and you got some of Preston John's people, the Israelites. That's why there's a distinction right here. That these American ancestors were descendants of the Israelites and the Tartars. So you got some of Preston John's people, some of Genghis Khan's people. But let's deal with this ancient inhabitants of Spain. What's up with that? I mean, could we look at it and surf the wave? Are we just talking about the swarthy Spaniards, man? Are we just talking about 
the so-called more on more which we know when the when the Hebrews got expelled in 1492 right we know that that's also you and our people they are already there so they're just connecting I think us to our people that's already in Spain You know, we just talking about our people in Spain, right? We just talking about our people in Spain. <laughs> so, don't get it twisted. So, yes, we are all connected. We know we got our Israelite family over there fighting the same hijack we fighting over here. And it's a small world, man. Because it's the three Indias, man. And it's all under King David. When we talk New Spain, look at the flag, and that's going to be the same, the same cross, man, right? The same roots, the same tile that we've been talking about. More on more war. Ancient inhabitants of Spain in the first place. An America's ancestors were descendants of, quote, ancient inhabitants of Spain in the first place. And the Israelites and Tartars in the second place. So you got all this right here. You got the Israelites and the Tartary. I mean, what's this? This is a young archer, a young soldier of the Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire, man. So, it's all you. It's all you. Let's go. Let's talk R9, man. And then we're going to uh, start making our dismount, man, bringing on home. So what's the possibility when we keep saying Anion, right? And they're, we already said we know they're hiding something. This is also the flag of the Viceroy of Peru. Follow the cross. Let's go. Follow the tab. We know they're hiding something again. And all these links, when it says the Anian River, Anian, is the Arnon. In numbers, it is simply Anian. Now, I check my Sefer. I check my Stones edition to Knock. I check my 1611 Bible. And all of them are translating, even in numbers, as Arnon, not Anion. But since we see that they're hiding a connection clearly between Anion and Arnon, then it enables us to be able to, especially bring in this Anion Kingdom situation right here to the land of Preston John, connecting it to the Bering Strait, connecting it all the way to Peru. Then we see why they're taking such a, you know, real sophisticated matrix type of glitch you know, way of hiding this stuff when it clearly says Anion in all these passages. And I'm gonna leave this link so you can check it out. All these say Anion right here, but then when you click on each and every one of them, and this, you can go on to page two or three, they're gonna switch it back to Arnon in the text, which makes us wanna get the actual text so that they can't matrix us. This is the issue about reading these texts in the internet is that they can just put an algorithm and just change these titles up just like that and it affects every single text where Arnon is supposed to be Anion alright so let's surf the way so when we talk Arnon or Anion alright it's first mentioned in Numbers 21 which we just got as the border between the Moab between Moab and the and the and the Amorites, the valley of Arnon, in the next verse undoubtedly indicates the numerous wadis contributory to the main stream. It formed the southern border of the land assigned to Reuben. And it's just interesting where we see it like this because even though they try to put it in the other world, this definitely looks like 
you know, the west coast of North America, right? Like this would be Cali, and then you got Ashtaroth right here with his, you know, Kingdom of Anion would connect to would be, you know what I mean? It's almost like they're putting it here, but you got to see. You could think this is the other world, or this, or this is the old world here, you know what I'm saying? It's very interesting, man. It formed the southern border of the land assigned to Reuben, man. So you got Reuben's land around this area. The city of Aror stood on the northern edge of the valley. Deuteronomy 3, all right, Deuteronomy 2, Judges 12. Arnon was claimed by the Ammonites as having marked the southern limit of their territory when Israel invaded the land, Judges 11. They, however, have already been driven out by the Amorites and the region north of Arnon was held by Sahan from the inscription of the Mesha, 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 all right, on the mobile Moabite stone we gather, we gotta dig on that Moabite stone some more, man. We gather that Moab had established herself on the north of the Arnon before the time of Amri. Under Amri and Aha, she was confined to the south of the river of rebellion. Under Mesha was put down by Jer Jehora, son of Aha, and the expedition of Hazael against Israel reached the valley of Arnon, but according to Mesha, he regained for Moab the lost land. So, the Moab Israelite land uh, controversy is an old one. That's why we can pull up documents today from Zillia S. Bay claiming longitude and latitude for the bays and the ales in this same period, this same portion, this same piece of land. They're still trying to claim it. And you've been at war in the same area. You've been at war with these hijacks, man. You know what I'm saying? These Genghis Khan hijacks, these Moabite or more and more, these other situations still claiming longitude and latitude for Prester John's land. Saying, oh, we're all the same people. We're all more. Join the more Science Temple, sons of Prester John. We're not all descendants of Prester John. You know what I mean? We're not all descendants of the priest king Prester John. He was at war against the Sultan. He was at war against the Moabites. This is the function. This is the Holy Grail. This is King David. So interesting take on this. So you see how it's all connecting to these Moabite situations. And that got me kind of digging into this more. <laughs> Even more. And it's just, you know, look. You're talking about the descendants of Prester John and the descendants of Lot. Alright? Other tribes. Other tribes. And we don't have to make it up. We can get it from, you know, these great sources that lay it out. You know what I'm saying? Love to this bro. Warlock. Asuli. Something like that. This is the prophet, right? The Moabite prophet because Israel only has Israelite prophets. So it's a Moabite prophet. And how do you know? It says the Thorndike Bernhardt Dictionary 1979 makes a direct connection between Moor and Moab. It states that Moor comes from the Moabites of the biblical Moab, son of Lot. That's your tribe. This is your prophet. Don't make all black people in America under this prophet. And why? Why, man? Because the Moabites from the land of Moab received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa and Amaruka. See, they received permission from the pharaoh. You were at war against the pharaoh. They were doing treaties with the pharaoh. The same way they do treaties of peace and friendships with this current pharaoh of the matrix system, the United States Corporation. Don't claim we're the same. We don't rock the same. If it's truly your land, you fight for it. You stand up and say, 
you know what? Fuck the treaties. When it's not your land, that's when you start making treaties and that's when you need permission because it's not yours. It's anything that's yours, you don't need permission. You rock or we rock out. You know what I'm saying? You dig? Their dominion and inhabitation extended from the northeast and southwest of Africa across the great Atlantis even to the present north, south, and central America. What? Their dominion. Sounds like a Tartary situation. Sounds like a Genghis Khan dominion type of situation like the old maps that we got of a Mexican. And now it's all Ham and Kush, Ham and Kush. It's their dominion of Ham and Kush. But we're just talking about certain tribes. We're talking about with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren. They don't talk about Israel no more. Israel don't exist on their Amexa maps. So you Israelites today, under Prester John, this is your king, this is your Khan, this is your ancestor. We're just talking about Prester John. But nah, you gotta be ham and kush to rock with a Maxim. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, man. You gotta be Canaanite, Hittite, or Amorite, or Moabite. That's the click. Psalms 83, Confederacy. It's a dominion, a hijack. But the Hebrews are there first. And inhabitation extends all the way to North, South, and Central America. Also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the Great Earthquake, which caused the Great Atlantic Ocean. And then we talk about a little bit Ross Cry Out. Evidence of the Moors inhabiting pre-Columbian America is explained in Horace Butler's book with Ross Cry Out. They even quoting uh, Mr. Butler. The Amorites under the nation of Moab are cited in other sources as ancestors of the historical Moors. Join our Moor temple. But what if you're not Moab? What if you're not Canaan? What if you're not the Hittite or Amorite? We're talking tribal war. We on the warpath, man. We on the warpath, man. Let go. I mean, let's get this dismount, man. I mean, can we find any in anywhere in the script? Nah, they're changing it all to R9. But if the Anian is connected, you know what I'm saying, right here with the land of Preston John, then the R9 biblically is connected right here to Preston John. And even when I dug on all the translations in the B.O.B. Classic, man, I'll leave all these links. We're just talking Numbers 21, 24. It says, Israel smote him with the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok. From Arnon unto Jabbok. But what happens when we're looking for this? In the New Living Translation, from my land, from the Anion River to the Jabbok River. Hmm. In Numbers, it is simply called Anion. So this brings the story right home. Now you can read and, and do all the searching you can in the script. And when it's talking Arnon, and we're talking about the Moabite-Israelite War with the Moabites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Canaanites. When you're at war against the Sultan, when Preston John is at war against the Sultan, when you're at war against Chinggis Khan and Batu and Manku and Kublai, when you're at war, man, you realize it's a frequency war and you're the last tribe to wake up, claim your land, because you are the Amaru Khan. You are the originals. And this ain't no play play. And all these translations, man, they change them all to R9. When right in your face it says Anion, Anion, Anion. Because they don't want to put it right here in the old world. They don't want to put the story here. But that's what Horace Butler's doing. And that's why... This cat is quoting Horace Butler, man. He's like, hey, look, man. Ross cry out. Horace Butler had to drop. Because he's bringing the R9, you know, connecting it with the reality of the old world. I got to get back in that to see, you know, what he's talking about. 
because I'm, you know, I'm not using his research. I'm not using your research. <laughs> this is the last seven, eight hours of recon with the tribe. Let's go. This ain't no play play. And again, follow the tile. Follow the tile, man. Because the tile might lead you places. If you want the body bag, I mean, if you want the body bag in America, pull it up yourself, and you're going to see right here, Anion Region. <laughs> and it's the same place that Prester John is at. Now connect that with the Arnon and the Valley of Arnon and all the whole situation in Numbers 21 and Deuteronomy 3. Deuteronomy 3. Again, this is North America. Look at Preston John. Look at Cathay. Look at Mexico. Same place. Anian. Region. Region. America. Anian. 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 Right over Cali. Mexico's right here. Peru's right here. This whole thing is Antioch, and it's connected to Peru. We're talking Peru, Salim. Body bag, damn it. Body bag for the illusion. So all this great talk on Antioch, and we see it right in our face. Antioch, America. Antioch, America. Antioch, America, man. I'm just talking India Superior, man. Is is Antioch, man. <laughs> I'm talking about the land of Preston John is Anian, man. So when we go back here, we're talking about the mythical straits of Anian. It's a myth because Preston John is a myth. The mythical straits of Anian, they're looking for it. It's in their imagination. I mean, get the, get the drop. The mythical straits of Anian by Godfrey Sykes. Get the drop. Look at this map. Anion, America. Anion is all that. Anion is all that, man. And that brings to light a whole nother flow when we're talking R9. When we know we're just talking. Oh, yeah. We're talking you. We're talking Anion. In numbers, it is simply Anion. 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 Body bag, man. Why? Because you are the true Americans, the lost tribes of Israel, headed by Preston John. And you can get deeper when you talk about the conquest of Peru, when you start digging on the kingdom of Anion and the connection with Peru. This is going to bring you right back into that Garcia situation that we just talked about. A Spanish colonial administrator who served as a member of the Council of the Indies and the Audiencias of pa Panama and Lima. In 1542, the Spanish created the Viceroy of the New Castle, which shortly afterward would be called the Viceroy of Peru in 1544. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Now we just saw a picture of a of a little black boy who was a Holy Roman uh, warrior, all right, with a bow and arrow. <laughs> so what do you think the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V looked like? Put it together, my people. Put it together, my people. We on a war path, man. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. It's a more on more war, baby. Genghis Khan, Preston John, the Tartars, the Israelites, the Kara Katai, Cathay. Cathay, Kara Katai, Kara Cathay, India. Preston John, India Superior. Anion region, America, 
Same place, India Superior. What? Holy Roman Empire, Emperor Charles V, named Blasco Nunez Vela Peru's first, first viceroy. So this 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 Negro over there is calling out shots, right? So he names Blasco the first viceroy, meaning that he's just colonizing the shit out of you. But the viceroyalty was not organized until the arrival of viceroy Francisco Alvarez de Toledo, who made an extensive tour of inspection of the colony, because now they're colonizing you. Now they're colonizing you, right? Because they want dominion, right? Because their dominion, oh man, their dominion and inhabitation extends from the northeast Southwest Africa, Morocco, and all that. Across Great Atlantis, even into the present North, South, and Central America. And Mexico. We have colonies now, my people. Now we got some colonies going on. So now they got these viscerals colonizing you. And they look like this. So this is what you just need to sink in. And this is what you're up against when you talk about people behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah, man. I mean, they look like you, right? He got his beard, you know, he got his thing. He'll be standing on, on the corner with any camp right now. <laughs> but you're talking, uh, Charles V, man, who colonized the kingdom of the priest King Preston John. You know, well after Genghis Khan already started the motion. Yeah, man, I'm talking Charles V, man. This right here with the crown, that's Charles V, Charles Quinto. A panel from the painting of Larco Museum in Lima, Peru, depicting the Inca emperors. This panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the subsequent first, the first European emperor of the Inca, Charles Roman Emperor Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Charles Quinto as the 15th Inca Emperor. 15th Inca Emperor. Now he's the Emperor of the Inca. See how he's cutting off your lineage, my naga? You see how he's cutting off the lineage of the Hebrew? Because we don't have to go far. We was already told to drop. That you are the descendants of the Israelites over and over again. Over and over again, man. Races of men. The Copper Indians, the true Americans, lost tribes of Israel. Just to see the truth that these Israelites were hijacked by people that looked like them. More on more war. Charles V, man. Wakey, wakey. And notice the connection with the Inca when we got another great book, Love to Caramello, that's breaking down how the Inca were literally the tribes of Manku Khan, grand grandson or great grandson of Genghis Khan. So now they already are connecting the Inca with Genghis Khan, which is why they were beefing with the other indigenous people and ruling over them and dominating them in Jerusalem. But now you see that Charles V is also an Inca emperor, which will connect him again to Genghis Khan and him, which is only the Moals or the Moabs, man. We just talking India Superior, man. We just talking Priest King Preston John. We just talking the copper color of Maru Khan. Remember, man, you already home. This is your world. You just, you just uh, fitting back in to your reality. You know what I'm saying? This is a reality check. We're talking the kingdom of Anion. We're talking the priest king, Preston John. And this is Preston John 41. <laughs> Allow Hawa. Keep having an incredible Shabbat, man. And dodge them hijacks, man. <laughs> dodge them hijacks in real time. And remember, who is Preston John? The priesthood. The Maru Khan, the real copper color Naga found here by the European. 
now we know we can connect our royalty we can connect the myth and we can connect the Anion in the land of Peru and the Anion right here with you allow Hawa to the home team we're gonna keep rising and keep tribing and realize you are already home peace and power